Good evening. Thank you for joining us in worship once again, both here in the building and those of you who are joining us worshiping at home. We do pray you are blessed in your worship of Jesus with us this night. As always, everything is projected for you behind me here on the wall. We are continuing our walk through um, the book of um, Psalm, Psalm 23. We're looking at verse 4 today. And yeah, I think that's it for our service notes. So I pray that God bless each of you as you worship him this night. I invite you to stand now. We begin our worship this night in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Friends, this is the day which the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting... Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Jesus said, If any man would come after me, Christ was wounded for our transgressions. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Glory be, to the Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I invite you to join me now as we take a moment to go to our Lord in silence, bringing those sins we know and those sins we don't know before God our Father. And then now together we cry out to our Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends, Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the Righteous One. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the Righteous One. Please be seated. Our first reading tonight comes from Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This is the word of the Lord. And our short gospel reading this night comes from Matthew 28, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord.
My friends, grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Tonight we continue our look at one of the most well-known psalms with a look at what might be the most well-known verse of the entire psalm. And in Psalm 23, verse 4, there is much depth and power in these words. But before we get into verse 4, we got to go back to verse 1 again, right? The Lord is my shepherd. Good. So, the Lord is my shepherd. And then verse 4 says this, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, when you hear these words, when you hear this verse, where does your thoughts go to? Funerals. Right? Death. And that surely is part of what this verse is saying. But the hope within this verse does not speak to just death, does not speak to just times of dealing with grief. You, you see, there's another way that we can translate this verse. So let me do that for you right now with a little bit of a different translation. But it begins the same way with verse 1, right? The Lord is my shepherd. Good. Now here's where it gets a little bit different. Even though I walk through the valley of deep darkness, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So what happens when we make this translation change? From valley of the shadow of death to the valley of deep darkness. When we make this change, what happens is this no longer just covers something that we need to think about when we're facing death or when we're dealing with a loved one's death and going through grief. The change in translation now widens the scope. Because how often do you and I walk through valleys of deep darkness? How often do we walk through valleys of deep darkness in our lives? A lot, right? Surely it's at the loss of a loved one. But also there are so many other times. The good shepherd, who is your shepherd, isn't only there with you during the times of the valley of the shadow of death. No, your shepherd, the good shepherd, is with you in any and every valley of deep darkness that you face in your life. Remember, this psalm is personal. It's personal. So what David says to you and me here is this. In life's most frightening times, you can be confident of God's guiding presence. So I need you to think about this. What is it for you right now? What valley of deep darkness are you walking through? For some, I know it's trouble finding a job. Others, I know, are, are, are struggling through a health one, uh, uh, the, their, their loved one's health. Others are, are facing a serious surgery for themselves or a child. Others, it's just worried about what tomorrow may bring. And yes, even others, it is a time of grief at the loss of a loved one. But friends, what this verse tells us is what we need to hear right now. This verse gives us confidence, confidence that it can, can abound, that no matter what you're walking through, no matter when you're walking through this valley of deep darkness, you're not walking through it alone. You're not. But maybe right now you're like, Pastor Scott, I'm good. Everything's going so well, and, and that's great, and I'm rejoicing and, and, and thankful with you, and, and what a tremendous blessing, but here's the deal. 
If that's you right now, you're not always going to stay up there. I can guarantee it. I don't guarantee a lot, but I can guarantee that you will walk through the valley of deep darkness. And I can also guarantee you that you don't walk it alone. Go back to the words here from David. Even though I walk through the valley of deep darkness, I will fear no evil for you. You, the Lord who is my shepherd, for you, the good shepherd, for you, Jesus, for you are with me. Not just leading here, folks. Notice the change in language. In this verse, it's not leading. Now, it says, no, he is with you. He's not leading you through the valley of deep darkness. He is right there with you. With me. No matter what type of danger you're facing, no matter the darkest and deepest valleys that you enter into, the good shepherd is with you. He doesn't just feed you. He doesn't just lead you to green pastures and, and still waters. No, in the thick of whatever it is for you, death or sickness, job questions, recovery, surgery, worry, the good shepherd is with you. And because he is with you, you have nothing to fear. Nothing. You have nothing to fear. And he says, you will fear no evil. Let's add a little thought to this. When the good shepherd is with us in this valley of deep darkness, this is a path that he is walking with you and I through. Quite possibly a path of righteousness for his namesake. That's right, you, you, you all know so well, there's no guarantee that this path of life will be smooth. It's going to be rocky. There's going to be those deep, dark valleys. But he walks with us. He walks with you daily through it. Because he's a good shepherd. And do you know what a good shepherd does? A good shepherd does not send his sheep into places he will not go. The good shepherd does not send his sheep into places he will not go. Evil will not win. You see, friends, God gives you and, and me this confidence Knowing that while we may endure hardship, while we may struggle, while we may fight down in these deep, dark valleys, he still provides the ultimate protection for his sheep. It says his rod and his staff, what do they do? They comfort me. The two tools a shepherd carries to watch over his flock, to protect them, they comfort me. Even as we walk through the valley of deep darkness, even though sometimes we stumble and fall, even though sometimes we get hurt, even though sometimes we don't understand the good shepherd walks with us. The good shepherd protects us. And he protects us from what fully harms. Because you see, this verse is not only about protections from the dangers of the world. This verse ultimately refers to deliverance. Deliverance from the evil one. 
Deliverance from all of sin and all of its effects. Deliverance from an eternal death. Deliverance that comes to you, where? From God, through Christ. And right to you and to me. The good shepherd. The good shepherd not only walks through the valley of deep darkness, but he hangs there to connect you and me to God the Father. Through his love, his grace, his mercy. No matter what you are facing right now, no matter what you're choosing not to face right now, no matter what is going on in the world around you, no matter even if you feel like you have absolutely no control right now, look up. Again and see. There on the cross is your guarantee that you are not alone. You're not alone. You're not walking this path by yourself. Even though, yes, you walk through the valley of deep darkness. You need fear no evil. For the good shepherd is with you, beside you, leading, yes, but also there walking hand in hand with you. That's where the comfort lies. This is where and only where we find comfort through all our days of deep valley lows. Why? For the good shepherd is with you always. Right? And since the good shepherd is with you always, he says, therefore, go and make disciples. Therefore, go and share the name of Jesus. Therefore, go and love your neighbor as yourself. Therefore, go and join Jesus in the neighborhoods. Therefore, go and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Why? Why does he say, therefore, go? Because what are people in all around us? Valleys of deep darkness. We all need the protection of the Good Shepherd. We all need Jesus. We all need Christ. For from God, through Jesus, to you and to me, He provides the ultimate protection. And in him, he comforts us through all our days. For we know that he is with us always, even to the end of the age. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. And now may the peace that pass all understanding. Keep our hearts, our minds focused on the Good Shepherd who is with us always, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, I invite you now to stand and join me as we make confession of the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. invite you to join me now in our responsive prayers. And before we do that, um, just to update, Marianne Gilbertson has now gone back into the hospital um, as of Monday. Um, and as of right now, as far as I know, she is still there. This time she is up in the city. So we continue to lift her up in our prayers. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, especially this night, Lord, we lay before you Sam and Mary Ann, Melissa and Don, EJ and Trina, Cheryl and Cheryl's brother-in-law, Don, Barbara Galky, Pastor Jones, and Dan Kirk. Lord, we lay each of these, your children, before you and ask that you put your healing hand upon them. Help the doctors and nurses to figure out what is going on and best treatment plans for them all. Father, we also bring before you all those who are dying, and we lift up to you all those who care for these, your children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Father, we pray for those who are stuck in deep, dark valleys. Whatever that may look like for them this day, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit work upon their heart to help them to see you and the love that you have for them to help them to see you and know that you provide the ultimate answer, that no matter what they are going through, you are there. You're there with open arms and love, grace and forgiveness. And so, Lord, we pray by the power of your Holy Spirit, you work in these, your children's hearts, and use us who know you and who have walked through those same deep, dark valleys, yet come out on the other side because of your love. Use us to be a blessing to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and then finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and drive from them all the snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace. And let your blessing be on us always, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, let us bless the Lord. Be the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. I invite you to join me now to turn mass to face to sing our hymn number 739, Precious Lord.
take my hand. Amen. Go and have a seat, friends. Just a couple quick announcements for you. Um, first off, we're on to Psalm 23, verse 5 next week. Um, Chad will be bringing you verse 5. I'll be here, but Chad will be sharing our message for us next week. And then also, Holy Week is right around the corner. Uh, just so you know, we've got some extra added services uh, this year uh, because of the numbers of wonderful people we have coming back to the building and because of our COVID restrictions. Monday, Thursday has three services. Um, 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock as normal. Our 5.30 service is going to be our first communion service. Uh, we have five uh, young ladies that are going through first communion this year. Uh, Good Friday will be at 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock. And then uh, Resurrection Sunday will be at 6.30, uh, sunrise, um, 8.15, traditional, and then 10.30, contemporary, with drive-up communion from 9.30 to 10 a.m., um, on, on Resurrection Sunday on April 4th. So just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up on that, and you can start thinking through that. Uh, that's it, but as always, do pray you were blessed in your worship of Jesus with us this night. God's blessings as you step out, no matter where you go, even into those deep, dark valleys, knowing that the Good Shepherd is with you, right by you, always, even to the end of the age. Our officers will let you out from back to front.